This is the Jason Walker Show. Two-time National Sports Media Association Montana Sportscaster of the Year and three-time loser, the Jason Walker Show. The best local and statewide sports coverage featuring the biggest guests from Montana. Flint Rasmussen uh, joining us here on the Jason Walker Show. He's freaking exhausting, too. You used to dance a lot more. Yeah, I know, lady. I'm 51 years old now. The NAI Hall of Famers, Mike Van Deese joining us here, Jason Walker Show. And is it just a deal where quarterbacks have to be good golfers? Well, that's all they have time for. They don't work out. They don't lift weights. <laughs> they don't do anything else. They might as well go get on the golf course at least have some fun. And from across the country. Doug Gottlieb, I guess, here on the Jason Walker Show. End of the day, remember, it, it's your show. It's got your name on it. Howie Mandel, our guest here. Jason Walker, deal or no deal? The Jason Walker Show. Broadcasting from the Major Mortgage Man Cave. Here's Jason Walker. Wow, there, there we go. <laughs> no idea what I'm doing. Jason Walker Show, happy Wednesday. We are presented by Capital Collision Center. Montana State Law says it is your vehicle, it is your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center. Big show coming up, Major Mortgage Man Cave. Actress Jennifer Freeman will join us. Talk about her uh, new holiday movie coming up, uh, debuting on Saturday on Ion Television. And uh, it's called The Bows of Holly. Jennifer Freeman will join us. She might, she's best recognized as uh, Claire Kyle, on the, the daughter on My Wife and Kids, the uh, Damon Wayans show. That's coming up in about 40 minutes. Also, here in about uh, 10 minutes or so, we'll check in with Miss Rodeo Montana, Miss Katie Lynn Krauss. Uh, love chatting with her. And there's some changes coming up for the Miss Rodeo Montana pageant. And she will explain it. And she's also going to tell us, I'm going to ask her, what is, she's a vet. So she works with vets. And she, she, I ask, I'm going to ask her, what is the most weird animal that she's ever uh, worked with in veterinary terms or veteran, in her job in the vet's office? All right. Let's, uh, <laughs> we also have on this day in history coming up and uh, a whole lot more here on a Wednesday, and uh, appreciate you joining us. Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, you can watch. You can also listen live on Podbean, Network One Sports, and TreasureStateRadio.com. And uh, we have uh, 747 new COVID cases reported today, 70,133 overall, 771 deaths, 490 hospitalizations, 17,294 active cases, and 52,068 recovered and there's over 5500 active cases in Yellowstone County and nearly 2600 in Cascade those are the big ones you have 1961 in the Flathead 1906 in Lewis and Clark have a poll up we haven't done a poll in a while so I put one up and I want to know should the national finals rodeo move from Vegas to Texas in six years Five years when the contract's up. It's your, all up to you. You can answer on Facebook. You can also answer uh, the Jason Walker Show. You can answer at Jay Walker Sports on the Twitter and uh, go from there. We will talk national finals rodeo in just a couple of uh, minutes. We'll get our uh, round six update from last night. Uh, but I want to start with Baseball, and two stories of baseball coming out today. Boise, what are they, the Skyhawks, formerly of the Northwest League, but they're going to join the Pioneer League, it was announced today, which is kind of cool. But that leaves nine teams now. Where's the 10th? Would it be Salem-Kaiser, Oregon, which is without a league, because the Northwest League is going with six teams instead of eight. So Boise and Salem looking for love. Boise got its love from the Pioneer League. It makes sense for Salem, but that's a lot of travel for these Pioneer League teams now to go Boise. Idaho Falls is one thing. But to go the extra few hours to Boise, but what about Salem, Oregon? I mean, that's not 
easy to get to from Windsor, Colorado, which is where the Owls, formerly of Orem, will now be. So you have three teams in Colorado, one in Utah, three in Montana, two in Idaho, and potentially one in Oregon. And not getting any love from Major League Baseball. Remember we talked to Greg Rockach about this last week. And uh, it's going to be interesting. It will be absolutely interesting to see how the Pioneer League uh, sustains, if it can. Um, what else? Oh, the Expedition League wants to be in Helena. So when the Brewers left a couple of years ago, the city of Helena gave Kendrick Legion Field and operating all of that to the American Legion teams. Now, Helena has three American Legion teams. And first off, that's too many. You only need two. Uh, there's an article at 406mtsports.com, and Nick Miller um, is a big opponent of the Exhibition League coming to town. And that's because they play from May to August. Or the uh, Legion goes from May to, or April to August, essentially. July is really, really wraps up. So... They're, he's part of the decision-making group for expedition or for the city of Helena. So the Expedition League wants to be in town. They're already in Butte. They announced that a, a couple of months ago. So you got the Senators, the Reps, and the Independents. And they had it exclusively at Kendrick Legion Field for the last two years. And they did a nice job, Okay. There was, what, this last summer, about 96 games played, um, roughly, which is a lot considering COVID. And, I mean, Legion Baseball pulled it off. They proved me wrong. I've admitted that all summer long. But part of the excuse for this is, well, the wear and tear at Kendrick Legion Field. Well, what did you do from 1978 on? Really, even before that. When you had Pioneer League. Now, is it because Pioneer League was okay because it was a minor league baseball team? But the Expedition League is, is a wood bat league and it's basically some you know college dudes. So, what's the harm in that happening? What's the harm in another league coming to town? They would share the upkeep on Kendrick. It's not just a Legion team now. And you can work schedules. I mean, they did it for years with the Pioneer League. Now, you have a lot of whining in the Legion program because, well, the, the independents and the reps couldn't play a lot of home games because of well, the Senators, and then, of course, the Legion team, the Brewers. Play during the day and have Brewers games at night. Like, how hard is that? You have tournaments on that field all the time where there's, you know, four or five games a day. What's three? What's three games? So we'll follow that. We'll reach out. Talk some Legion baseball next week. I just, do I want the Expedition League? I don't know. Is it going to be fun? I don't know. But can we do something? I mean, why, why does it have to be, they're talking about getting turf, which is upwards of $300,000. And we talked about what Nick Miller said in 406mtsports.com that, they destroy the field if they have to play Legion games and the Expedition League. Now, where was that thought about destroying the field when you had the Helena Brewers? Nobody cared then. I think it's American Legion baseball program in Helena has gotten a little big for its britches. 
thinking that it's the only game in town. What's wrong? I mean, <laughs> people are still going to choose Legion over Expedition League. But what's wrong with having more baseball, more adult baseball, instead of you know, 13, 14-year-olds running around? You don't need three teams in Legion baseball. You just don't. You got the reps, you got the sends. That's perfect. Most teams in most cities have two, the A and the B, or the double A and the A. But we'll keep an eye on that. Um, get some comments already on our poll. Should the National Finals Rodeo move to Texas permanently when the, when the contract's up in Vegas in five or six years? Um, Cassidy Shea O'Neill, who we had on the show yesterday, said uh, the convenience because of COVID is nice for Fort Worth, uh, but Las Vegas is better because you can, in fact, walk everywhere. The shuttle system's way easier. And she just spent a week down there, so she knows this. Uh, quote, I loved Fort Worth and the cowboy nostalgia, but Vegas has a better setup. Uh, Jeff on Facebook says no with seven O's. Uh, Chantel uh, says, uh, so miss NFR in Vegas. Uh, Mike says, nah. <laughs> so keep your comments rolling in on the Facebook, whether it's my page, Jason Walker, or uh, the Jason Walker Show. You can also at Jason Walker, or at Jay Walker Sports on the Twitter. Should the national finals consider moving to Texas full time when the contract is up in Vegas? And uh, you can vote. Keep that coming. Uh, was that it? I think so. Oh, no, national finals. How about Haven Medjid last night setting a new round record, round six record, and he got the job done in a hurry last night. And uh, let's take a look at his run from last night. Really good go at him. In other words, they were late getting to his head. Haven won't be late. And throw right there. Look out. This is Haven in the work. Turns him to him. Flank strings, he's gonna tie the first six second run right here. Yeah, I'll say, wow. we're gonna ask you, we're gonna see the sixes eight. tonight, and we are. Man, you talk about somebody that, and you know, I'm just an old guy that doesn't know anything anymore, but that guy, watch him go to the outside with it. The other night we talked about it, and I said, Man, your horse pulls so much to the right, turn him to the outside if you can. Well, that's how you do it in 6.8 seconds. That's why he's got a gold buckle on, says he's a world champion. Well, there you go. That was uh, Haven Medjid last night setting a round record of 6.8 and winning the tie down in over $26,000. And uh, that's awesome for Haven. That is fantastic. Uh, dude needed, uh, he, he struggled the first few rounds. He seems to be getting his uh, championship mojo back, which is uh, super cool. All right, let's get the update now from Jeff Metters and Butch Knowles, your round six highlights last night. Well, I have to be honest, when this year's Wrangler NFR got underway, I had some Las Vegas withdrawals, but Globe Life Field in Arlington, Texas, it's starting to feel like home, and I think the competitors at this year's Wrangler NFR could say the same thing. Rough stock scores sky high. Time to vent times just keep getting faster. Yeah, isn't it funny? You know, you bring the best guys in the world, and you get them in the same arena competing, whether it's out there in Las Vegas in that little Thomas and Mac or here at the ballpark. Big stuff happens, and they're just getting faster and better. Can't wait to watch the final few rounds here in bareback riding. Tim O'Connell still number one. Casey Field about 20,000 points behind him. But it was a Wrangler NFR rookie that got the win tonight. Yeah, an impressive rookie, too. Cole Reiner, what a ride. Little Red Hawk, they've had a lot of events. They're all rounds one on her. He won another one tonight. Coach Hampton still wrestling. Time was 3-3. I love the reaction from both guys. Yeah, this is a little uh, Luke Rooster Reynolds reminiscent <laughs> right there. That's good stuff. If he starts winning, we may see some crazy stuff. And then Stetson Jorgensen, big effort right there. Tied him at 3-3. Three and three. That's okay. cool. Yeah, and he wants some tickets to the gun show. Team roping, Cody Snow, Junior Negata. They got it done, 3-9. Boy, I'm telling you, Junior had to get it out of there and get a dang stop because Cody was running out of room there in those bucket shoots. What a run at 3-9. White Casper still number one in the world, but the guy that's tracking him is this guy right here. Right or right, got the win tonight, 90 and a half. Boy, tracking him, all say tracking him. He just keeps going and winning and winning and winning. And, you know, he's not going to go away. He hasn't got it won yet, but I'm telling you, he is tough. 
Tie down roping Haven Medjid, the reigning world champion. 6-8, fastest time we have seen in six rounds. It looked like the hardest thing for Haven was to stay on his horse until he threw his rope. I mean, he was so quick to that calf. Medjid is back. Well, Haley Kinzel gave sister the night mm -hmm. off. That kind of changed things in barrel racing, and Emily Miller made the most of it. Well, Emily Miller and Chongo, you know, she gave Chongo a night or two off earlier, too, and came back last night, made a really, really good run, but hit a barrel. Wow, what a run tonight. Wins the go-around. Good for Emily. There's a lot of strategy going on in the barrels, and it's showing up in these later rounds. Couldn't quite get to the 16s, but she got the win. And how about Dustin Bouquet's been stone cold, hadn't rid a bull in five rounds. He got on two re-ride bulls tonight. The third one was the charm. Yeah, that's the third bull he got on tonight in about 10 minutes. That's big time, and it's good to see him. He has been snake bit no longer. 89 and a half. So uh, there you go. There's your uh, results from last night. Uh, the Montanans doing pretty well. Lisa Lockhart in second in barrel racing and she's i mean she's dead last in the average a two-time average winner but she has hit more barrels than the rest of the competition combined and lisa doesn't normally hit barrels like that but uh, she finished second last night and uh, was just off i think it's eight one hundredths off of uh emily miller's uh, winning time last night chase brooks uh started off hot and has uh struggled a little bit the last few rounds placing out of the money uh, Jess, uh, Jess Brown out of the money as well last night. We got round seven coming up uh, tonight down there. Uh, Clay Tryon, by the way, and his partner Jake Long in team roping, sec or third consecutive runner-up last night, and uh, they're getting they're they're doing well uh, down there. So uh, and Chase Brooks we talked about out of the money, and he is still second in the average, but he has 17 points behind Ryder Wright, who has won three of six rounds at the national finals. Remember the, the year he won it was at 2017. Ryder won the first five rounds, and then I think he came back to win the 10th. But he's so good. The Wright family in the Bronx, come on. They're so uh, awesome. But, all right, we'll take a break. We'll talk more rodeo, but on the pageantry side, there's some changes coming up for Miss Rodeo Montana and Miss Teen Rodeo Montana. We'll talk to Miss Rodeo Montana, Katie Lynn Krause, when we return. Jason Walker Show is presented by Capital Collision Center. And Montana State Law says it's your vehicle. It is your choice. Where you have it repaired, choose Capital Collision Center. Katie Lynn Krause, Miss Rodeo Montana, next. Have you thought about buying a home and just don't know where to begin? Well, when it comes to one of the most important purchases one can make, we understand it can be frustrating and confusing, but it doesn't have to be. Let the Major Mortgage Team help you with all your mortgage needs. Major Mortgage means major service, and we would love the opportunity to help you today. Give J.R. McFadden, NMLS number 1246357, a call today at 406-465-1918, or you can visit him at 2001 11th Avenue, Building A, Suite 3 in Helena. Major Mortgage is a division of AMCAP Mortgage, NMLS number 129122, equal housing lender. Who doesn't love being number one? When your team's dominating the standings, or your favorite band rocks the charts at number one, it feels good, right? Kind of like how it feels when you have auto insurance with State Farm. Because making you feel like number one is an honor your local State Farm agent takes seriously. Through the good times and not so good, your State Farm agent's proud to be here to help life go right. Call State Farm agent Mike Miller in Helena today. Yes, it's true that Montana is a long way from the Gulf Coast, but you can bring that Cajun flavor home with a stop at Cafe Zydeco. From po' boys to classic sandwiches, Cafe Zydeco has all the best Cajun in town. Are you in the mood for seafood gumbo or crawfish etouffee? Maybe you're craving jambalaya with some shrimp and grits. Head in for breakfast, lunch, or dinner, or call ahead for pickup or delivery. Cafe Zydeco will fix all your southern cravings, even on a chilly Montana day. Cafe Zydeco is a proud sponsor of the Jason Walker Show. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rutgers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rutgers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $299. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena.
Welcome back, Jason Walker Show. It is 20 past the hour. We are brought to you by Capital Collision Center. Hanging out in the Major Mortgage Man Cave with Santa all, all, uh, all December long. He's listening. He knows. He's watching. You better be good. This segment brought to you by Rutgers Furniture. Make the quality choice for your home. Rutgers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. Uh, some more comments coming in on our uh, poll question. Should the national finals move to Texas permanently in five years when the contract is up with uh, Vegas? And uh, Angela says uh, it all depends on who comes with the money, basically. Uh, but here's one big key that a lot of people are talking about. Angela mentioned this, too. The rodeo starting at about 545 live mountain time. Which is awesome. Normally it starts at, I think, 8, recorded, when it's in Vegas. So, or it's live, but then it gets recorded, and yeah. Anyway, so that's a thing to think about. But I don't think we can move it out of Vegas permanently. Like Flint Rasmussen said to a, a guy, we were talking on Twitter last night about this. And Flint said, uh, no, <laughs> basically. And, and his question uh, he, that he was answering was about the PBR and the national finals. But Flint said, uh, can't get caught up in what's going on right now. Texas is a wonderful host, but you can't bench the starting quarterback for getting hurt. Love that analogy from Flint Rasmussen. That makes absolutely perfect sense. So there's pros and cons. Pro, I mean, we get to start watching earlier, which is awesome. Um, con, it's not Vegas, you know? I mean, that's just it. But uh, we'll continue this discussion. You can vote on Twitter. You can at Jay Walker Sports. You can vote on uh, Facebook. You can email us too, Jason at JasonWalkerShow.com. All right. Uh, there are some changes coming to the Montana Pro Rodeo Finals, the Circuit Finals, and the Miss Rodeo Montana Pageant. Joining us now to chat about it via AirLink on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline is our great friend, Miss Rodeo Montana, Katie Lynn Krause. Well, first off, um, how are you? Because I haven't really talked to you much, Katie Lynn, since uh, the last time when you were in studio, when we were able to finally have people around. Yeah, I, I am doing well. We are chugging along, um, making things work around here as Miss Rodeo Montana best we can. Um, it's been great. I'm doing well. I'm still working full time at my job at the veterinary hospital. So it's been really great. This is uh, super cool to talk with you. It always is, but um, we were just chatting. I've got my Miss Rodeo Montana sash that you brought up um, over this in the spring. So that's not going anywhere. Yeah, I expect it to stay there forever. I expect. <laughs> Miss Rodeo Montana's to make it to your studio and take a picture with it. So oh, I like that. I like that. <laughs> Katie Lynn Krause joining us, Miss Rodeo Montana. All right. So there's some changes uh, for 2021 with not only the circuit finals, but also with rodeo queening. Let's start with the circuit finals moving to Kalispell for the year. How do you feel yeah. about that? You know, I think it's a great decision just because the Montana Pro Rodeo Finals Committee was able to get together and make a decision so we can have our circuit finals. That is the most important part. Um, they were able to find a location where we actually will be able to sell a limited number of tickets. So that's really exciting. Um, it's going to be held in Kalispell at the Majestic Valley Arena. Um, and tickets for that will go on sale December 15th. Which is uh, next Tuesday. So that's, yes, uh, yeah. that's, Soon, ca that's very quick. <laughs> um, I talked to yes. Miss Teen Rodeo Montana Cody Carson a couple days ago, or yesterday rather. Yeah. Uh, this is her backyard, so she's jacked. Is she going to be showing you around town now? Uh, yeah, I've actually had the opportunity this summer. I've actually stayed with Cody twice. Okay. And this will be the third time I get to go up to Kalispell, hang out with Cody. We always have a good time. We get along really well. I'm really glad Cody is my teen through this mess of 2020 and will hopefully be a much better 2021. Um, so I think it's uh, yeah, it'll be a really great time. 
All right. And speaking of queening, you get the title for another year, as does Miss Cody because of COVID. Yes. And I think that's a great, great deal. Uh, Cassie Turner gets the Miss Last Chance Stampede for another year. All the queens, yes. Jordan Tierney on the uh, uh, national side, and we'll talk about that in a second. But I think that's an awesome deal for you gals because you missed out on so much this summer. Yeah, they originally made that choice because Jordan, they just wanted to give her the opportunity to actually be Miss Rodeo America and feel like Miss Rodeo America. That is, you know, the end of the line, the highest you can get, the biggest honor you can have as a rodeo queen. And they wanted to make sure that she had the proper opportunity to represent the best she can. Are you still a little bummed that you're not down in Texas battling for this right now, or rather Vegas, where it should yeah. be? <laughs> so uh, I am not only bummed that I didn't get the opportunity just to go to Texas to watch NFR, have a good time, but I'm holed down the fort here in Montana. Um, I've actually thought a lot about, you know, if they would have already crowned Miss Rodeo America True. by now. And thinking back, I'm almost glad that you know we all got this other opportunity and they did give us the chance to have another year with our states have another year to prepare for the miss rodeo america title because this year was so it was so weird for everyone um finances were weird schedules were weird i think that if they were to have put a miss rodeo america pageant together it probably wouldn't have been the same experience as you know, every other year has been. Miss Rodeo Montana, Katie Lynn Krause, our guest here, Mike Miller, State Farm Hotline. With the decision, Katie Lynn, with you and, and, and Cody and Cassie and, and Jordan and all the other rodeo queens, not only across the state but across the nation, this is a big time commitment, not only for a year, but now for a second year. How much did you decide pros and cons on if you wanted to do it another year? Yeah, so I definitely had to sit down you know, with my family. I had to look at my personal life goals. I had been thinking about going back to school. I am highly considering going back to school for animal nutrition. Um, and so I, you know, have those passions and dreams that I want to get onto. But I really think that they did not make this second year mandatory for anyone. It was optional, I even believe, at the local level. They ask all these girls, and most of us are more than willing to do the job that we love to do anyway. Um, but I, I'm glad I chose to be Miss Rodeo Montana for another year. I really think that 2021 is going to be a year, and I really want to take the opportunity to do the best job as Miss Rodeo Montana and, you know, make the most of it. Now, you're still acting as Miss Rodeo Montana. I mean, you're, you didn't yes. dress up for us, so I mean, in full disclosure. You, had, uh, you got to talk uh, to some kids today up in Geraldine. How'd that go? Yeah, so with 2020, you know, everything's different, but we are slowly finding ways to, you know, get around and continue to do our jobs in a virtual manner like we are right now. So I actually had a virtual school visit at the school in Geraldine. I spoke to the kindergartner through fifth graders about rodeo, what I do is Miss Rodeo Montana. All of them had such great questions, and I really hope to schedule a bunch more of those virtual school visits until we can do them in person again. All right, so I know, and we joke about this all the time, but I know how long it takes you to get ready for, <laughs> to, be, to dress up. Uh, get all yes. dolled up, queened up, but is it a little, I'll say frustrating because <laughs> you're on video and you're not in mm -hmm. person. So you're just sitting in your bedroom going, all right, I, I got to put my sash on. I got to do the full four hour routine. <laughs> well, I can tell you that my routine is not four hours. <laughs> <laughs> but it's about one and a half to two to get everything all situated from no makeup, no curls to full face. <laughs> on. Um, it is a little different being virtual. You know, I'm not currently wearing cowboy boots. I'm, you know, in my own house. I don't have to get all the way dressed. Most of the way dressed. Well, that's good. That's... I do have Wranglers on. I'm, I have pants on. Okay. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Katie Lynn, Miss Rodeo Montana guest here, Jason Walker Show. That is fantastic. Uh, full transparency, I as well have pants on.
Um, they good. are my work sweat. Always good to know. Yes. I was wondering. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's been days I've thought about it, but yeah. Anyway, uh, moving on. So there is also something new, Katie Lynn, with, uh, with Miss Rodeo Montana that is going to be new starting in the fall, I guess, um, of 2021. Take me through this. Yeah, so the Miss Rodeo Montana board, so Miss Rodeo Montana Incorporated, decided to also, you know, make the best of this 2020 situation and turn it into an opportunity. We have been talking for several years, actually, about incorporating a lady-in-waiting program. So we are going to be changing our pageant, and instead of being held in conjunction with the Montana Pro Rodeo Circuit Finals in January, it will hopefully be held sometime this summer. So the goal is we will crown it will be Miss Rodeo Montana 2022 and Miss Rodeo or Miss Teen Rodeo Montana 2022 sometime this summer. The earliest it would be would be in August. So hopefully sometime between August and October, we will hold that pageant and they will be crowned Miss Rodeo Montana 2022 and they will hold as lady in waiting. So okay. what that means is sent from the pageant um, this summer. I will still continue to be Miss Rodeo Montana until January of 2022. And then in January 2022, we will do a passing of the crowns, as we say, and the new Miss Rodeo Montana will then carry on her duties. Gotcha. Um, I like this idea because if something was to come up, um, I guess she could take over right away, or would that revert back to who you beat in 2020 yeah. you know that's a really good question i am not 100 percent sure is like you know if i were to get the only thing i could imagine if i were to you know get severely injured in some way where i could not you know do my duties as miss rodeo montana if they would use in what the contract says right now runner up um miss rodeo montana would fill the shoes or if they would go ahead and use lady in waiting that's probably something that the board needs to talk about make a decision on um but not something that we currently know <laughs> how many rodeos okay so kayla when she was miss rodeo montana kayla seaman she went to like 100 plus rodeos how many did right. you go to this last summer because we didn't have that many right i actually i made it to 10 which is i think is pretty cool for <laughs> covid um <laughs> i went to Two out of state. I went to Rodeo Rapid City in South Dakota, and then I also made it down to the Silver Spurs Rodeo in Florida. So those were my two big out of state trips, and then I made it to eight summer PRCA rodeos in Montana. It was so such a weird oh. summer. I'm just yeah frustrated still. You know, it's um, we love we love the sport of rodeo, and you do it. You're doing a great job when you're allowed to be able to do your job as Miss Rodeo Montana. Yeah, and that's one of the challenges that we have all been facing is, you know, when we get the opportunity to go to the rodeo, show up, that's our favorite time because we know how to do that job. That's why we're Miss Rodeo wherever. Mm -hmm. And that's, you know, what we competed to do. But in this situation, we've had to get creative. We had to come up with new ideas virtual school visits, you know, just how can we do the best we can do as Rodeo Queens given the situation that we have? Well, I'm super excited that you get to continue for another year because I feel like we didn't get to um, <laughs> hang out and we didn't get to do yeah. <laughs> the normal Jason Walker show, Miss Rodeo Montana connection. So I think this is great. Now we have another year to hang out and, and hopefully get yes. you to the studio again. <laughs> Yes, I hopefully, you know, maybe after circuit finals, we can talk about, you know, what's going to be happening in 2021, plans for the upcoming Miss Rodeo America pageant when we get closer. Hopefully, I will be scheduling some sort of fundraiser. That was another thing that was really different this year is that we are kind of unable to have in-person fundraisers. Um, both myself and Cody did a really good job of raising enough money online or through other means to, you know, get us through this year. And I think, you know, Cody did a really good job being thrown into this as, you know, Miss Teen Rodeo Montana. Um, and I think we're both just excited to see what 21 has to offer with, you know, changes and 
I hate to say, you know, going back to normal, who knows what normal is going to be anytime exactly, soon. Exactly. But um, I think we're ready for, you know, whatever's going to be thrown at us. I think with all these challenges that any source of normalcy will be so ready to, you know, take on <laughs> opportunities. Have you been able to keep up on your writing? Yes, yes. So I've been writing quite a bit. I still have the horses easy access to me, so I've probably been writing more. Maybe not as I'm not preparing for Miss Rodeo America, you know, this very instance. Um, but I've been riding my own horses, you know, as the weekends come by or on evenings when I have time. So I've been riding quite a bit, which is nice. That so. is good, yes. Um, I need to come down and go riding with you. Oh, uh, yes. We have lots of horses that you could <laughs> I know that would take good care of you, so I think that'd be a lot of fun. <laughs> it's been uh, it's been a few years since I was on. I, the last time I got on a horse, gosh, I don't even remember. Um, I grew up on them. But, oh yeah. Yeah, but now it's been a it's been a while since I've gotten on a horse. So. Yep, we have a lot of beautiful mountains and trails up where I live, and so I would love to take you on a trail ride someday. We'll do that this summer when you're not super busy and uh, yes. in between some rodeos. <laughs> But yes, we'll definitely do that. Um, I think it would be awesome. And how's how's the rest of life going? Non rodeo, non miss rodeo, just how's life for Katie yeah, Lynn Krause? So I have kind of been working that essential worker life. I work as a veterinary technician at All West Veterinary Hospital here in Bozeman, and so I've actually been working full time during this whole situation and I consider myself very fortunate to have that opportunity. We had, you know, we had to make some changes initially when COVID first started, we were doing curbside, um, but we were fully open, fully functional, you know, everything else as normal. How do you do curbside vet service? Take me through that. <laughs> no, what? The, just, what they hold the, the cat client. out the window? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not drive through vet visit. <laughs> so curbside involves the client would just drive up to the clinic. They would give us a call and be like, oh, I'm here with Fluffy. And one of the technicians would go out and we would get our history. We would ask all the questions, what's going on with Fluffy. And we would then take the patient, dog, cat, whatever we see, um, inside the building without the client and um, do our exam, do necessary treatments. We would usually ask for their cell phone number so we can call them and ask quick questions if we need. And then once we're done doing anything we need to do in the clinic, we will take the um, pet back out to the owner, to their car, and then they would make payment over the phone. Um, what's the strangest animal you've worked on? Ah, so <laughs> I get asked this a lot because when I talk about where I work, we actually see exotic animals. So it's all West for all creatures. So we see a lot of different things. Um, one of the strangest things I've ever seen or ever helped work on, um, it was called, it's a Savannah monitor. Oh. So you know what Komodo dragons are? Mm hmm a savannah monitor lizard is very similar to those. They are very large, or they can grow very large. This lizard was about 60 pounds. He walked into the clinic on a leash and harness, walked <laughs> on the scale. We got its weight on the dog scale, and we walked it into the exam room and then started talking about husbandry and everything else that you talk about with big lizards. So that was definitely a strange experience, pretty unique. So I thought it was really cool. Um, that is awesome. That's not yeah. what I, I expect. I expected like a pig or a turtle or something. Oh, but. oh, those are normal. <laughs> <laughs> those are everyday. Those are everyday animals. <laughs> uh, well, I appreciate you joining us, and um, you're welcome anytime. You know that. And uh, yeah. keep up the great work, not only as a vet, but also with Miss Rodeo Montana. And we'll talk soon. How's that? Yeah, no, I love that. Thank you for having me. I always have such a great time on your show, and um, I'm glad we had this opportunity to catch up. That was uh, Katie Lynn Krause, Miss Rodeo Montana. So this is cool, too. Um, she took third in a mask contest from Miss Rodeo America uh, at the beginning of the month. Um, 
So that was her. Second place was Miss Colorado. And first place was Miss Utah. So Katie Lynn taking um, third, which is awesome. So Miss, let's see, Miss Rodeo Utah, Cassidy Jones, uh, Miss Colorado, Haley Fredrickson, and uh, Katie Lynn Krause, Miss Rodeo Montana. So they had some prizes and they designed uh, these masks and stuff. That's pretty cool. So, uh, so there you go. I love it. All right, we're going to take a break. When do we come back? Um, we're going to talk Hollywood Christmas movies. Just one with Jennifer Freeman. She will join us next here on the Jason Walker Show. Storewide savings are what you'll find when you shop for new home furnishings at Rockers Furniture. This means tremendous values on Helena's largest in-stock selection of home furnishings. When you shop Rockers, you'll find storewide savings on the furniture you want for every room in your home. And you'll also find our selection of Serta Eye Comfort, the most comfortable beds in Helena. 12-month financing is available with approved credit on most purchases over $289. Ask for details. You'll find storewide savings at Rockers Furniture, 1010 Dearborn, Helena. New vehicles keep coming, and Capital Collision Center keeps earning certifications to repair them. They're Helena's newest GM-certified facility. No matter the make or year, they repair your car to manufacturer's standards and requirements, maintaining its safety and value. Montana State Law says it's your vehicle and it's your choice where you have it repaired. Choose Capital Collision Center, certified in GM, Subaru, and Nissan, and Helena's only shop certified in Honda, Acura, and Ford. When you value safety, go to Capital Collision Center on Euclid. Jason Walker here, and I want to tell you about a great place that's going to make you feel better in just an hour. Ocean Spirit Massage. From deep tissue to hot stone and more, Ocean Spirit Massage will get your sore, tired muscles feeling like new. Whether you overdid it working out, hiking the hills, playing golf, whatever it is, or even if you're pregnant, you will walk away feeling better than you have in years. Book now for yourself or make it a couple's massage. And gift certificates are always available as well. Visit OceanSpiritMassage.com or call 417-0542. Everyone knows about Dinners Done Right and the convenience of the cook and carry cuisines. It's so easy to just stop by and you have something for dinner that night. But there's also one more thing you need to know about. Dinners Done Right Grab and Go Salad Bar. Yes, I said salad bar. Always the freshest ingredients, along with a daily soup and nacho bar, too. So the next time you are in a rush or you just want to eat healthy, stop by Dinner's Done Right for the soup, salad, and nacho bar. For monthly menus and more info, it's dinnersdoneright.com. Welcome back to the Jason Walker Show. That's what she said. As always, brought to you by Dinner's Done Right. Right there on... Um, Cedar. <laughs> um, dinner's done right.com, though. Great, great. Stuff. And you know what? Gift certificates would be, uh, uh if you're not going to do this for yourself, do it for someone else. Get some gift certificates and pay it forward. Dinner's done right.com. This segment brought to you by Mark LaRoe Photography. And Mark's got his calendars out, and we've been showing them to you. The scenic Montana landscape calendar. And also the Cowboys of Western Montana calendar and fantastic photos. Go to MarkLaroePhotography.com and check them out. And those make great Christmas presents as well. I mean, Christmas is coming up. So, I mean, Hanukkah starts tomorrow. Christmas on uh, two weeks away. What, 12 days? Are we officially into the 12 days of Christmas? By the way, I saw something 12 days of Christmas over $130,000. Something like that. If you just do the one time through, it's like fifteen grand, I believe. Something like that. All right. Uh, there's a new holiday movie coming out. There's a lot of them. Um, this is on Ion Television on Saturday night, and it stars Jennifer Freeman. It is called Bows of Holly. Here's a preview. We're going to stick to the plan. Next year is the wedding, the year after that is the baby, and there's nothing in the plan that says I can't propose first. Holly has a plan for everything. I want to make sure that when I say yes... It should be a pretty easy yes or no. ...until everything falls apart. (laughs) And she's charmed... Jake. ...into living in the moment. At your service. Guess I'm stuck here in Christmas Wonderland. Oh, no. Give me the tour. 
I insist. No looking back. But what Life if? shouldn't be about the what ifs. It should be about the what nows. Snow makes it a perfect Christmas week. Couldn't have planned it better. Without all your hard work and planning, you wouldn't have been able to waste the day with me. It wasn't a waste. She's out of your league. I'm just showing her around. I guess you're gonna need a Christmas miracle. You were right. Being spontaneous is exhilarating. When you experience life's greatest adventures. All new holiday movie, Bows of Holly, on Ion Television. Your home for the holidays. And joining us now to talk about that movie is the star. She uh, is named Jennifer Freeman. She joins us now on the Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. This season, easily oh, happy turn to, memories happy on to your be phone here, into just the living the dream, getting to talk to you. So this is awesome. <laughs> oh, that's sweet. Thank you so much. <laughs> All right, I got to ask you first off about this movie. Uh, I saw the trailer, Bows of Holly. Um, you do the proposing, and you kind of get shuddered. And uh, take me through the movie without giving it away. <laughs> okay. Well, Holly is, she owns a greeting card shop. And she's a bit of a type A personality. You know, she's a planner. Like, you know, ever met one of those people that just, like, has the day plan, has the year's plan, and, like, this is exactly how it's going to be. So she, you know, um, decides to take it upon herself and, you know, it's time to get married. That's the plan, right? Mm -hmm. So she proposes mm -hmm. to her boyfriend, and it does not go as planned. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so she has to, you know, then figure out, you know, what to do. And, you know, she wants to be in love and all of that stuff. Um, and she ends up, uh, you know, uh, I don't want to give too much away, <laughs> but obviously, it's a romantic comedy and it's a Christmas movie. So she ends up finding love in the end. And um, it's just a really cute story. Um, and it's just really uh, quirky, cute, fun. And it definitely has the Christmas spirit. It's just like a warm movie. So it's really special to me. I'm very proud of it. And um, I can't wait for everyone to see it. It comes on Saturday on Ion Television. Uh, Jennifer Freeman, our guest yeah. here, Jason Walker show. Yeah. Um, where'd you guys film this? Cause there's some unbelievable scenery. Yes. So we filmed it actually in August <laughs> in Colorado, Denver, Colorado in the mountains. And it was so hot. And so we were in like winter clothes, obviously, cause it's a Christmas movie. Right. Um, and funny story is I, I actually had never been to Colorado before, and no one had really warned me about um, altitude sickness. Oh, <laughs> so we were high up in this town, in this really charming, cute town. I mean, it's beautiful when you see the movie. It's just so, it's such a cute town. Um, but it was high up. The altitude was high up. So I was just wondering, like, why do I feel like my head is pounding? I feel like I'm going to throw up and... So anyway, I had altitude sickness and heat exhaustion or, you know, heat, uh, heat stroke because it was so hot. So oh, that was an adventure. They, they took, they took good care of me and, and all of that, but it was, it was, um, it was super fun. I mean, we, we filmed this in the middle of a pandemic and I think that, I mean, we were all really blessed to just be able to be creative to do what we love to do and kind of, you know, just come together and kind of forget about everything, even though, you know, it's under different circumstances, obviously, you know, with you having to get tested and all the safety protocols that they have. But um, it was just fun. Like everyone, we, we really had a good time. And I, and I really think that comes across on screen when you, when you see the movie, the cast, the crew, um, you know, we, we really, um, we really had a good time filming this movie. It is uh, it's called The Bows of Holly. It'll be on Ion Television, debuting Saturday yeah. night. We are talking with Jennifer Freeman, the actress who uh, a lot of us know as Claire Kyle. That's never going to go away. Do you get tired of hearing about that? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't, actually. <laughs> it's funny, um, you know, because uh, sometimes, like, like, more so recently, I have a daughter who's 11. And she was like, who is Claire? That is not your name. <laughs> and so I 
job and I had to like, and she doesn't care really about like acting or anything I do. So she really, she just really didn't understand. And so then I had to show her, I'm like, oh, oh like mommy was on a TV show. And like, this is, she was like, oh, she's like, that is not your name. You are not Claire. Um, so that was funny, but no, I don't, I don't get tired of it. I'm, I'm really proud of that show. And I mean, we had so much fun filming that show. Mm. Um, I mean, it's, it's part of my childhood, you know, growing up because I went to school on that show. I mean, I went to set school. I didn't go to high school or, um, for junior high. I was filming the show. So I have so many memories and I'm still, um, you know, friends with Tisha Campbell, mm. who plays my mom, who for like a you know big sister now at this point um not so much mom but but yeah I, I you know it has so many um so many good memories so no I don't I don't get tired of hearing it Jennifer Freeman our guest here um you've done television theater film um what's your favorite what is my favorite yes I have done all of them um I think I'm, I like them all for different reasons. I think with theater, you get like an, more of an immediate response, you know, in the room of, of what you're doing because it's live. And I feel like that way with, well, live TV show tapings, which I'm not sure we'll ever do again. But um, I, I like, you know, you kind of feed off the energy, you know, and, it, and it's kind of like a rush. And it's, it's nice to have that like instant gratification of like what you're doing, you know. Um, but I love movies too, because you, you know, go away and you work on a project, you become really close and tight with your cast, with your crew, with your directors and just everyone involved. And it's a really special experience. So I'm not, um, I don't know. I I really, I really like them all for different reasons. Jennifer Freeman joining us here, Jason Walker show. Uh, tell me about your two co-stars in the bows of Holly. Yes. So Johnny Packer, he is, uh, he plays Jake, and he is the, um, the carriage driver, um, of, like, I, um, Holly scheduled a tour, like, for the engagement that she plans, um, and then she still has to go on this, like, this Christmas engagement trip that she plans, uh, anyway because she already paid for it Mm -hmm. so so johnny jake his character's name is jake he takes her on this um tour and in the process you know he's the opposite of um of michael copan which is the character that i proposed to my boyfriend okay he um they're the opposite you know know, and so he's like adventurous he's like a really really sweet and nice guy and my boyfriend, he's, you know, he's a bit of a show-off. He's kind of an asshole. He's really, he's really sweet, but, you know, he's really charming and, you know, but they're just, like, complete opposites. So, um, so you know, it, it's actually very funny in the movie because they're so opposite. They, we, they play really well off of each other. And a funny story is I actually knew Michael Copan from when I was a teenager. So... It, like he we had the same circle of friends and then he left and he moved to back east back home um so i i hadn't seen him since and so when i we, when he got cast and he came i was like oh my god <laughs> like we you know we knew each other from when we were kids it was just so crazy so that was really cool to reconnect with him and to play with him because we knew each other you know he he would go in for like the jokes and um, you know, it, it was, it was just, we just had a lot of fun. <laughs> That's really cool. Uh, final question real quick. Uh, Cause I know you're busy today, but uh, was it, I mean, we talked about the weather, but it was it weird to be in a Christmas spirit in August. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and no. Um, yes. Meaning, like we were like it's so hot oh my god it's so it's so mm-hmm. hot but like looked around like this town in general that we were at it just looked like christmas even without all the decorations so so it was it was really really cute you know it was mm-hmm. like all these little quaint stores and so it was really special well i'm yeah. looking forward to uh the <laughs> yeah, movie it's 
Oh, I'm just saying I'm looking forward to the movie. Um, Bows of Holly, it, it'll be Saturday night on Ion Television, and I think it's going to run again Sunday as well, and then uh, Thursday, Christmas Eve, the 24th. So, Jennifer Freeman, uh, congratulations on a great career. Thanks for joining us, and uh, can't wait to watch this movie. Thank you so much. <laughs> Jennifer Freeman joining us on the uh, Mike Miller State Farm Hotline. That's what she said. Brought to you by Dinner's Done Right. Make sure you stop by, see the crew, and uh, get your weekend meals planned out already. All you got to do is just stop by and grab something out of the freezer. You got to pay for it. You also can uh, go to dinnersdoneright.com and uh, pre-order as well. Uh, appreciate it, Jennifer Freeman. So, yeah, uh, Bows of Holly. It'll be on Ion Television uh, Saturday night. Or check that Sunday night. December the 12th, I guess. Uh, I don't know why I thought Saturday. But anyway, Sunday the 12th at, uh, what, 8 o'clock Mountain? Is that right? 5, 6 Mountain? I don't know. Just check your local listings. How about that? Uh, and then it'll be on Sunday the 20th and then again on uh, Christmas Eve uh, through the afternoon. Bows of Holly with Jennifer Freeman. Thanks for, uh, for joining us. Uh, let's see. We were going to get to... On this day in history, it is National Pastry Day on this December the 9th. Weary Willie Day. So on this date in 1898, Emmett Kelly, an American circus clown, was born in Sedan, Kansas. He was known as Weary Willie, so that's why it is Weary Willie Day. Say that three times fast. Uh, Christmas card day as well. Get your Christmas card sent out. Uh, on this day in 1913, uh, heavyweight Jack Johnson and Jim Johnson fight to a no decision in Paris. 1922, the first Australia Asian Championships women's tennis in Sydney. And Margaret Molesworth wins the inaugural title. 1926, USGA legalizes steel shaft golf clubs. 1935, the first Heisman was awarded, Jay Bernwanger of uh, Chicago. And 2019, World Anti Doping Agency banned Russia from all major sporting events, including the now 2021 Tokyo Olympics and 2022 uh, Football World Cup in Qatar for manipulating lab data. It means they're cheaters. And uh, happy birthday today, 1853. Haas Radburn was born. Ole Haas Charles Radburn, American baseball pitcher. He went 60 and 12 in 1884. 72 decisions. 1938, happy birthday. Deacon Jones, who passed away in 2013, the Hall of Famer. Dick Butkus' birthday is today, Hall of Famer. And uh, had his number retired on this date in uh, 1989, I think. Anyway, uh, one death in sports on this date. Branch Rickey passed away at the age of 83 in 1965. Uh, a couple other birthdays. Clarence Birdseye, who invented the modern frozen food industry, was born in 1886. Kirk Douglas was born on this date, 1960, uh, 1916. He just passed away this year. Sylvia, the singer, nobody. Great, great country singer. Uh, she was born in 1956. Donny Osmond's birthday today, 1957. There you go. Uh, I know our friends on Treasure State Radio getting set to leave us, but we uh, got a couple of uh, things still to do. We're almost at the end of the show. What did we learn? And what did he miss? Time for the walk-off. All right, coming up here at the top of the hour, it is um, the College Gaming Championships semifinal round, the Fatal Four. And our buddy Trevor Funseth, uh, the mop who we spoke with last week, had a message for Seton Hall. Seton Hall, we're going to teach you city boys a thing or two. But it's not just me you have to deal with. You got my partner, Gracious, as well. You guys practice with the guns in the game, but we practice with the real thing. We've been eating for six weeks, and we still ain't full. Listen up, Raynard, Noah, and Nicholas. Hopefully UNC taught you what happens when you underestimate us. Guys are crazy. Just out in the hills somewhere in Bozeman. <laughs> Seton Hall. Trash talk. Uh, you can watch on twitch.tv. Is that what it is? 
Uh, you can Google it, find it. Uh, good luck to the boys from Montana State in the Fatal Four tonight against uh, Seton Hall. And I don't know if you saw this, but I don't even know if this is real. But Denver 7, ABC 7 in Denver, this is their weather guy. Wait, where's, where'd it go? What happened to it? Uh-oh. Let's go back. There we go. Maybe. Maybe it'll play. Nope. All right. Well, we'll try it tomorrow. How's that? <laughs> we'll save it. We'll try it tomorrow. So we'll, uh, we'll just get ready to wrap up. You got night seven of the uh, Wrangler National Finals Rodeo tonight, round number seven. And uh, hopefully Haven Medjid can keep up his, uh, his good streak that he's off on uh, thanks to last night, breaking a, uh, a round record with the six and eight. And your day sheet tonight uh, on the bareback for Montana Cowboy Richmond champion. He'll be on Big Stone Rodeo Mayhem, Big Bronc, uh, for bareback. And let's see, other ones out. Uh, some good ones. Prairie Rose from Sankey. Irish Eyes from Sankey is out tonight as well. Um, Sankey's been killing it down there in uh, Texas. Saddle Bronc tonight. You have uh, Chase Brooks second in the average. He'll be on Frontier Rodeo's Crossfire. Sankey's uh, marquee will be under Isaac Diaz tonight as well. And then in uh, bull riding, a couple of guys out. Parker McCown and... Um, Tre uh, Trevor Kastner, each having some injuries, and uh, they are uh, not competing tonight or tomorrow. Hopefully, they'll be back for the weekend. But uh, Jive Turkey from Dakota Rodeo is out tonight. War Cry from Big Stone. Slinger from Universal. Um, Spotted Demon from Big Stone. And uh, Hocus Pocus from Powder River is out tonight as well. So, some good ones. I just figured out why that video wasn't playing. We'll do it tomorrow. We'll find out why a weather guy in Denver, I don't even know if it's real, but it's funny, and we're going to watch it tomorrow. Also tomorrow, Mark Adams, former Rocky coach, current college basketball analyst for ESPN, will join us. He'll uh, talk about his book as well, The Coach and the Geek. Becky Christensen Mapston will join us tomorrow from Texas. Special thanks to Katie Lynn Krause, Miss Rodeo Montana, Jennifer Freeman, the actress, joining us today. We'll uh, do it again tomorrow at 4. Go to jasonwalkershow.com. If you're on a rewatch, say, say hi. The Jason Walker Show is produced by the Jason Walker Media Company. Any reuse, rebroadcast, or retransmission without the express written consent of the Jason Walker Show is strictly prohibited. Just listen, watch, and enjoy.